Welcome to Accreditation Talk. Thanks for joining us today. During each episode of Accreditation Talk, we'll be learning about accreditation at Midstate. I'm your host, Beth Ellie, Director of Institutional Effectiveness, Accreditation and Quality. I'm also the Higher Learning Commission Accreditation Liaison Officer for Midstate. Today, we are joined by Dr. Deb Stencil and Tria Kimball, and they're going to share some important assessment updates and share what we learned from our recent assessment plan report. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Could you each please share a little bit about your role in assessment at Midstate? Uh, sure, I can go first, Beth. Thank you. Um, I am really the one who kind of oversees um, our assessment work, and uh, I really kind of rely on TRIA a lot um, to do the day-to-day -day, uh, work around assessment. And I work mostly with faculty on the assessment, both part-time and full-time faculty, on their assessment initiatives and efforts in their courses and through their programs, employability skills, gen ed outcomes, <clears throat> and the, the co-curricular outcomes. So um, I'm, I guess, first point of contact for them mm -hmm. with assessment issues. And I feel like um, Mid-State's so fortunate to have you both um, organizing and executing our assessment plan. I, I just feel like faculty have great support in, in really mm -hmm. understanding the goals and how things work. Could you tell me a little bit about what you found or what, what um, is in that report? Sure, I can I can start, Beth. And sure. I think if you if you see this slide, we do have a five year assessment plan, um, and we really modeled it at, from a time frame standpoint with our strategic plan, which is also five years, and really going from that 2020 to 2025 time period. So you can see on the slide uh, the cover of our five year assessment plan, um, and because we're now currently in year three, you can see that we do have two assessment plan reports. So we do have the one from 2020, 2021, and then our most recent report is the 2021-22 um, report. Um, and we'll go through some of the highlights, but certainly I would encourage anyone to go to the website and review the whole report. So from a highlight standpoint, as I mentioned, we do have that five-year assessment plan. So we're always going back to the plan to make sure that we're doing what we said we were going to do. And within that five-year assessment plan, we do have annual um, activities. So we can go to the, you know, currently 22-23 assessment plan, and we can go through that plan and check to see what we said we were going to do. And then as Tria said, she's the one who ensures that uh, we are staying on track. Um, as part of the plan, we developed an active assessment team, and that team continues to meet about a, on a monthly basis during the school year. Um, so we do have regular meetings, and that team really is charged with helping to guide our efforts. Uh, they provide input. Uh, I rely a lot on the faculty to kind of be my eyes and ears to see how are things going around assessment? Are there questions? Are there things that we can do to enhance the support that we're providing? Um, so they're really a great group. They they know a lot about assessment. They've done additional professional development, and they often um, are providing professional development for other uh, faculty and staff. Uh, we also, again, provide professional development. That is one of our, our goals, is to continue to sustain our efforts around professional development. So we do that formally, maybe through uh, faculty in service, but we also do it informally you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then a lot of our focus over the past year, or last year, has been on watermark training. And TRIA really set up that program for us so that we have an electronic means uh, to document our, our assessment efforts. And she's done that watermark training so that faculty can, can use the, the software to document their efforts. Wonderful. So because of Watermark, we are now able to run several reports which can show us <clears throat> how our efforts are are just the, the sheer raw data of what we're doing. And we break everything into five different categories, employability skills, course competencies, program and gen ed outcomes, and co-curricular outcomes. And that, well, that's that's four areas, but program and gen ed usually get split mm -hmm. out. Um, <clears throat> so when we started this in 2019, we had asked faculty to do 
two competencies in each course and uh, then to do two employability skills one semester, three the next semester and then all of their program or gen and outcomes. And because of that, that's why you're seeing a big leap in the numbers from 2019 to 2020 in a lot of areas. And 2021, we're finally hitting our groove, um, especially mm -hmm. with course competencies. Some faculty have decided that they want to do all of the competencies in all of their courses every year, and that's that's reflected here. But when you take a look at the total outcomes assessed, we're doing a lot of assessment work around the college. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to gather that data of met or not met, but it's another thing to analyze that data and tell the story behind that data and then make improvements based on that. So we go hand in hand with these, with what we're doing in our program and course data assessment with what we're doing in program review, strategic planning, and it all mm -hmm. marries together into um, a, a, a great way to prove to HLC and just as a sustainable practice for ourselves, right. best practices, that we're doing the right thing. So what we noticed is when, when faculty are telling their story and uh, giving some ideas of what they want to improve for the future, it boils down to three different categories. One is fixing the actual curriculum in your course. The next one is developing better teaching strategies. And then the third one is making sure that we're, we're providing support to students at all levels. Um, so through those big buckets of things, we have pages and pages of, of documented actions and activities that faculty and uh, co-curricular staff would like to do. And um, all of this is documented in the analysis section of all of the watermark reports. And I can help you figure out how to see those reports at any time you're interested. I I feel like it's uh, impressive to show our each faculty's commitment to mm -hmm. providing quality learning experiences and just really showing that, you know, through this documentation, but not only doing that, but making those changes to right. better our students learning. I, it's impressive. Right. right. For me, Beth, when I look at those numbers, um, it just demonstrates that we really have a college wide effort around assessment. It's not in pockets, but over time, um, faculty, co-curricular staff, they've continued to add and better understand what they need to do and they're doing it and i'm just so grateful because i do think we do we have this culture of assessment across the college and and you're right tria there we have a lot of documented changes that faculty are making whether it's to their curriculum or what they are actually do in the classroom or encouraging students you know to connect with their academic supports and tutoring um to make improvements in student learning and really at the end of the day that's what this is about is are we seeing changes in student learning and I think that's part of that analysis now is we can look at it from semester to semester or year to year you know after those changes are made is it making a difference right and we can document that difference and if it's not making a difference well then we just try something else it's all part of that continuous quality improvement process um, so we're doing just just great things around assessment. And we we not only assess in the classroom and in our co-curricular activities, we actually in, assess um, institutional outcomes or higher outcomes. And I just want to share some of those assessment highlights. Um, some of our programs have external assessments where they may be like for nursing have an NCLEX um, exam and we're looking at the pass rates. Um, many of our um, allied health programs have an external assessment, but not only in allied health. So each year we are looking at those external assessments, collecting that data and monitoring results over time. And also looking if, if there are, if test results are going down, looking at how can we improve those outcomes for our students. Another area where we assess is program review, that's that annual evaluation of our program health. Um, and just to give you an idea of, of the number of sessions we hold, um, we be, hold between 42 and 47 sessions that cover between 69 and 73 programs. We also do courses like GPS um, in review. 
as well. So we're really trying to um, capture the full breadth of our academic offerings and look at that quality year to year. And lastly, we do something called service team review, which is an evaluation of our um, areas like finance or IT or um, if APEX just completed one. Um, so each year we have a, a couple of reviews, up to five reviews going on, where we're just constantly looking at that service side of our college as well to ensure that quality and also assess that quality, you could say, and ensure that we're delivering on that end. Um, so recommendations. So after we compile all the data, uh, we sit down and we think about, you know, what can we do for the, in the next year? Are there some things that we need to change or modify or continue? So recommendations for the current year around assessment is just making sure that we have college-wide representation on our assessment team and they're actively promoting the efforts of, of what we're doing across the college. From an assessment plan standpoint, kind of have to figure out how to um, bring our new faculty uh, into the fold and make sure that everybody knows that we have within the five-year assessment plan an annual plan and really kind of documenting and sharing what we're working on for that year. Um, for professional development, um, WTCS does have their, um, well, it's every two years, their WTCS assessment conference. Um, so we will be talking about that and seeing who wants to attend uh, that conference. And certainly we'll continue to have additional training and watermark, as Tria said, maybe got going down to, you know, how do I generate reports? How do I look at data over time and those types of things? And certainly we'll continue our day-to-day, -day, uh, which is the uh, a faculty teaching and learning day that's at the end of the fall and spring semester, really dedicated to um, having faculty spend time with their data and documenting data in their um, in watermark. From an assessment of student learning standpoint, we, we know the numbers, we know everyone is working on assessment. I think really focusing on the analysis and making changes to improve student learning, as well as looking at what is the impact over time with the changes that we're making. Um, we also have to update our course competency assessment strategy, so it's a good time for us to really kind of figure out what do faculty want to do in terms of how many competencies they're assessing and over what time frame. Uh, from an external assessment, just making sure that we stay intentional about focusing on the results and then working with the faculty and teams to see if there are things we can do to improve uh, those results. Um, program review, Beth, that's in service team review. Those are really um, big initiatives that you, you take care of. And one of the things we incorporated for this year is really looking at textbook costs. Um, service team review, we've created a five-year schedule so that we know that all service teams will be reviewed on that, on that schedule. So we're not losing track of any of them. Um, just wanted to know, you know, as we're talking, mm -hmm. you may want to know where do I find these assessment reports? So you can go to About Mid-State Institutional Effectiveness, you click down, and um, you'll find a student achievement information. Um, yep, thank you. Uh, tab. And if you scroll down on this tab, you will see not only our institutional um, outcomes mm -hmm. data, which is the Higher Learning Commission asks us to post. At the bottom, you'll see our assessment plan and um, our three years of assessment reports. And then um, the external licensure pass rates we were discussing are also posted on the website. All of this is available for the public to see. So um, just go on there and we'll also put a link um, as we post this on um, the source so you can um, get this. Um, just wanted to thank you all for um, coming to accreditation talk today. If you have questions about program review, service team review, um, things of those nature, uh, please mm -hmm. reach out to me as far as um, assessment. You can reach out to Deb and Tria. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you, um, viewers, for coming to Accreditation Talk. Stay tuned for more um, shows on accreditation. Thank you.